Uh, okay then, uh, we'll get started. Am I audible? Hello? Hello? So myself, uh, Arun, uh, I'm doing my uh, PhD at IIT Madras. Uh, now I'm a second year student and uh, I'll be helping uh, you guys to uh, uh, go get through this course. I'll be solving some assignment problems and then uh, we can have some discussions. Uh, so uh, starting with the first assignment uh, questions, these questions are the previous year questions. and. Uh, we can solve them one by one. There are some theory questions as well as some numerical questions and I have also added some theory portions uh, which will help you in the exam as well as in your coursework. So, uh, which will help you in your examinations and uh, for your uh, future studies also. So, uh, the first question is the equation that considers uh, the balance of the water balance that goes in and out of the catchment is known as. So we have four different options. So the first is the hydrologic budget, water budget, groundwater budget and none of the above. Uh, coming to the answer, uh, the answer is the water budget. Uh, the reason is groundwater budget deals with only the uh, inflow and the outflow that is related to the aquifers. It is not related to any other uh, surface water parameters. And uh, the hydrologic budget is a very general term and uh, it includes the surface water, groundwater as well as the system budget. But uh, this water budget or the surface water budget both are synonymous which represents the uh, water balance that happens in a catchment. And uh, Second question is, uh, what is the total percentage of fresh water that is present on, above and within the earth? So this was uh, thought by a professor in the first lecture itself, like uh, uh, what is the distribution of the water on the ocean as well as in the land. And uh, out of the total water, only 2.5% is uh, fresh water. And uh, out of the total water, 3.5% is available in land and 1% of it is saline. So the rest of the 2.5% is the fresh water that is available. So in the week 1, 
uh, in the week one we would have also uh, introduced to a term called as the residence time so the definition of the residence time uh, is the average duration for which uh, for the water particle to pass through a phase of the hydrological cycle so putting in terms of mathematical putting it into mathematical terms uh, we have a residence time is equal to total volume of the water in a particular phase divided by the average flow rate in that particular phase so let's say if you want to calculate the residence time of the atmospheric water so the total volume of water which is available in atmosphere is approximately computed as 12900 km cube and the average flow rate of the moisture which comes as a precipitation on both ocean and land is 458,000 and 119,000. So put together it is around 577,000 kilometer cube per year. So now that we have both the terms, if we divide it, we get the uh, residence time as 8.2 days. So these, uh, uh, these numbers, now you may be wondering from where these numbers came. So these numbers are very approximate and it is uh, uh, represented in the textbook uh, Applied Hydrology by Venti Chow. You can refer to these uh, tables, table 1.1.1 and 1.1.2. Uh, so I have uh, calculated another example for you. So the total volume of uh, groundwater is uh, this much as fresh water and uh, 12,870,000 as uh, saline water and the average flow rate of the groundwater is uh, 2,200 km cube per year. So dividing these two quantities you can see the answer as 10,636.36 uh, years so which is approximated as uh, 10,000 years. So again these terms are uh, uh, these values are taken from the applied hydrology by Venticha. So, uh, do you guys have any doubts in the residence time? Hello. Okay. Next question is, uh, uh, the land that drains all the streams and rainfall to a common outlet point is known as uh, uh, dash, that is catchment or watershed or we can also represent it uh, by a terminology called as basin. So uh, there are some points uh, which are to be remembered. So uh, this figure represents the uh, single catchment. So you can see the green line, which is the boundary of the catchment. So this boundary is called as the ridge line. And the ridge line is formed along the highest points in your uh, topography. And this separates different catchments. So adjacent to this green line, there may be some other catchment which is flowing towards the other side. And within this catchment, you can see the stream networks, different stream networks. So here, this uh, yellow color boundary represents a sub-basin. So that is within a single catchment and it drains to a single outlet point. And we can also draw one more catchment. Let's say this is the point and around this, we can draw one more catchment, one more sub-basin. So in a similar way, a collection of sub-basins together forms a single catchment or it can also be termed as a watershed. So for all our uh, hydrologic analysis, uh, uh, we'll be uh, delineating the catchments and then uh, we'll work with it. So any doubts related to catchment? Uh, Hello. Okay. Uh, next, you are introduced to the uh, Reynolds transport theorem and uh, 
continuity equation, momentum equation, energy equation. So before going into any of this, uh, in one of the lectures, uh, it was a, uh, there was a terminology called as continuum. Uh, do you guys have any idea? You have uh, studied in your fluid mechanics or uh, any other course? What is continuum? So any idea? You can say anything. Uh, it's just a just to know whether uh, you have some idea. Um, guys, this is interactive session, so... Okay. Uh, let me explain what continuum is. So, if you see here, uh, fluids are comprised of a uh, number of molecules and uh, the behavior of the fluid determ is determined by the average molecular behavior. So, individual fluids uh, uh, behave in a particular way and uh, the average molecular behavior represents the total behavior of the fluid. And uh, Let's say if you select a small uh, uh, portion of, uh, let's say this container is uh, filled with uh, water and you fix a small uh, area and let's say there are some uh, 10 power 6 molecules of water in it. Now you try to divide this uh, particular, uh, the total amount of uh, the fluid that is present into smaller particles. So you keep dividing it into smaller and smaller pot. And uh, this kind of uh, idea is called as the continuum assumption. So you can divide a piece of uh, fluid into smaller and smaller parts and make your analysis. So why is this made? So when the continuum when we say continuum assumption, we can apply the limit concepts. And when we apply the limit concept, we can go to the differential calculus. So when we apply the uh, you differential calculus, we can find out for each small elemental area, we can uh, determine what is the property of the uh, fluid. That is, we can determine the velocity, we can determine the uh, pressure in each particular point within that fluid. And uh, all of these uh, parameters are continuous functions and uh, they can vary at uh, each point in the space. So here uh, I have just, I'm going to just demonstrate a hypothetical experiment to find the density. So here there is a container and it is uh, filled with uh, gas. So initially the volume is uh, some V1 and the density is also identified. And Density is represented by change in uh, mass divided by the change in volume. Now, at a particular time, there is a V1 amount of volume and we have determined the density and we are filling the gas in, inside this container again and now the volume is V2 and the mass is uh, M2. Again, we find the density. So, and we find out the difference in the density, which is represented by this equation. And we are doing this again and again. So, we are uh, we keep filling the container and then we determine the change in the density and we plot this particular uh, graph. So, the y-axis represents the change in the density and the x-axis represents the change in the volume. So you can see from this graph, after a certain point, no matter how much volume changes there, your density remains constant up to a certain limit. This particular uh, uh, behavior indicates the continuum assumption. So if you encounter such kind of uh, 
uh, conditions then we can say that continuum assumption is valid so what happens after this after this particular point you keep increasing the volume let's say uh, for this a great example would be your uh, ocean you keep increasing it has a huge volume and your density varies uh, with respect to the volume so as you keep going down your density changes so now uh, when this uh, continuum assumption can be said to be valid so here let's say we have uh, 1 million amount of uh, molecules and uh, by using the avogadro's law we can calculate what is the volume so i have just uh, calculated a uh, volume that contains 10 power 6 molecules of water which is equal to 18 represents the molecular weight of the water into 10 power 6 molecules divided by the avogadro's number which will give you the volume now that volume is uh, uh, this much quantity and now i am converting it into meter millimeter cube and if i take the cube root of this particular value it will be around 10 power minus 5 so what this represents is for a million molecules the elemental area to fill 1 million molecule is only 10 power minus 5 mm of a cube understood yes sir yes sir so uh, you can see that this dimension a cube of side only 10 power minus 5 mm it's very very small so this particular dimension is very small when compared to the dimensions that we'll deal with in the fluid mechanics or in our uh, hydrology so we always deal in terms of uh, up to mm or maybe micrometer so in that those cases the continuum assumption is uh, valid so uh, now i have uh, put some points which are uh, important for a control volume so what is a control volume can anyone uh, define uh, based on the lectures Uh, can someone say what is a control volume? Hello. 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 Yeah. Hello. Sir, I think control is a.